Daf Kuf Aleph Amad Aleph. We'll begin Kuf Amad Beis, the bottom line. So we learned previously that if a person pours down the side of a ship, the wastewater, even though the ship might be a Rishus HaYachid and the body of water that it's flowing into is a Carmelis, and of course one cannot be mighty from a Rishus HaYachid to a Carmelis, but if he pours it down the side of the ship, it's only Kaychai. And Kaychai be Carmelis le Gozraban. Even though if this would be a Rishus Aram, they would be guys, but not by Karmas. Uminal Tamra, what's my raya that Kaycha be Karmas le Gozum? Sanya, we learned in the Brysa, Svina, in Metal Tlem, Lemi Sayyach Le Yam, Lem Yam Lutech. The Svina, if it's a Rishus Ayochid, the body of water, the Yam is a Karmas, so you cannot take from the Svina to the Yam, and vice versa. Rabbi Yudai Mer Amukha Sara Ben Gavaya Sara Metal Tal Mitach Leyam of Eloi Mena Yam Leteicha. Rabbi Yudai says that if it's Amukha Sara, if the ship has a depth of 10, I mean the walls of the ship are at least 10 Falcham high, therefore the ship has a den of a Rishos Hayach, the En Gavaya Sara, but it's not more than 10 from the surface of the water. It's submerged somewhat in the water. So from the top of the water to the top of the ship, it's not 10 Tvachim. We'll see why that's relevant shortly. But like Alponimus says, if the ship has a dinner of Rosh then metal mitoychol yam, you can you can pour out from the ship to the yam, avaloi min yam but you cannot draw water from the yam into the ship. So, why can he not draw water from the yam to the ship? Because he's metalto, that's considered metalto from the karmelis to the rishosayoche. The yam is a karmelis, the ship is a rishosayoche. Well, if that's the case, well, the other way as well, the reverse as well. Isn't he being metalto from the rishosayoche to the karmelis? Why is that permitted? But must be then when we say he's allowed to from the ship to the yam doesn't mean pour it directly into the yam. It means pour down the sides of the ship. Achuda and that teaches you. We see from here clearly that why is it permitted? Because it's kaycha. He's not pouring it directly from the ship, the rishus to the karmelis. He's pouring it down the side. Kaycha be karmelis You have a right the kaycha loy gazer. Now, the Rishonim asks a question over here. Well, this is Rabbi Huda Shita. But apparently the Chachamim argue. The Chachamim apparently do not make this chilek over here. So why don't you have a raya the other way, just the opposite, just the opposite that the Chachamim are geyser kaycha b'karmelis. The Chachamim say that svin ein metalgum l'tayicha liyam v'loy mina yam l'tayicha. And they do not uh, make any any chilek. So they would seem to be that the Chum say, even pouring it down the sides of the ship would be also, and Kaicha would be also a karmless. So why are you bringing it right from a Yehuda? Why isn't it a kash from the Chachonim? So the answer Taisus brings really relates to the statement that we didn't fully explain yet, that Rabbi Yehuda says, Amukha Sarav and Gavaya Sar, that if it's, the ship is 10 deep, meaning it's Roshul Yochid, but it's not more than 10 higher than the surface of the water. What is the significance of that? So the way Rashi explains it is that it's not a Gavayasar, because if it would be Gavayasar, if the height of the ship would be more than 10 from the surface of the water, then in any event, it would be permitted. It would be motor because, because even to draw water from the Yam into the ship, in order to get it into the ship, that would necessitate lifting it higher than 10 from the surface of the water. If the ship was 10 off higher than the surface of the water, in order to draw the water and bring it into the ship, that would mean he would have to raise it above the walls of the ship and raise it above a height of 10, which would mean that he's passing it through the airspace, the avir of the Malkin Petur. Now, even though if this would be a Rishus to Rishus Rabbin passing it through the Malkin Petur would be also, 
But Rabbi Yehuda holds that since we're dealing with a Carmelis, a Carmelis to the Rishul Sayyachet, if the ship would be 10 high from the surface of the water, he would be able to draw it in because it would be passing from the Carmelis through the airspace of a Malkin Patur into the Rishul Sayyachet, so it would be mortar. So that's why Rabbi Yehuda says this distinction that I'm making between drawing the water or between now pouring it down, that is only if the ship is not 10 high. But if the ship is 10 high, there's no such distinction because both cases are motor. Now, the way Tais explains is that the Chachamim on that they argue, meaning they don't argue that pouring it down the sides of the ship are motor. They also agree that Koycha Bekarmel is like Gazer. But where they argue on Rabbi Huda is, is that in the case where it is higher than 10, they say drawing the water in such a case is still awesome. They say in such a case it's still awesome. So when they say, they're not talking about kaycha. They're talking about if he pours it directly. And the chacham say, and it makes no difference what the height of the ship is. Even if the ship is higher than 10 from the water and he would be drawing the water from and bringing it from the Carmelis through the airspace of a Balkan Patur into the Rosh or if he would be directly lowering it down from the ship, Rosh up through the airspace of the Malkin Patur and pouring it directly down into the water would be Osir. Rabbi Yehuda argues on that and he says, if it goes through the airspace of the Malkin Patur, since it's a Carmelis and Rosh they would not be geyser. But Everyone would agree that Kaicha, but Carmelis, like Gaza, pouring it down the sides of the ship would be Motun. Omar Rav Huna. Hani it's also the Mishan, the small boats from Mishan. Ein metaltan behem ela ba'arba. You cannot carry within them. They are not considered to be a Rishus HaYachid, they're considered to be a Carmelis. Normally a ship would be considered to be a Rishus HaYachid, so you can carry throughout the ship like you can carry in your Chatzar, in your house. Normally a ship has a wide base and has walls which are ten high, so the interior of the ship is a Rishus HaYachid. But the Bitsosa, the Mishan, are the small boats that come to, so similar to a canoe, they come to a point so where you have the bottom of the boat, it comes to a point, it does not, therefore the mechitzas do not enclose an area which is dalar al dalar. In order for mechitzas to have a din of mechitzas, it has to enclose an area which is at least four tzvachim by four tzvachim. Since these small boats come to a point, they're like canoes that come to a point, the bottom of the boat does not enclose an area of dalar al dalar, so it's not considered to be a, therefore, either two ways of learning it, one way of learning it is, and therefore, the mechitzas are considered to be not extended to the bottom, and they're considered to be mechitzas tluyas. So that's the way it seems from Rashi that he seems to be learning. Some of Horshim learn, and that what it means is, and therefore, the mechitza, it does not have a din of mechitza, it's not a mechitza. But taking the first approach is, is that if the bottom of the boat, they, at that point, it does not envelop a, uh, an area which is, enclosed an area which is Dalet al Dalet. The bottom of the boat does not have a din of Mechitzas. Where it does envelop an area which is Dalet al Dalet is higher up, but that's considered to be suspended. That's not reaching the bottom. And therefore, that's a Mechitza Tluya. It's a suspended Mechitza, which does not have a din of a Mechitza. That's what he wants to say. So that's what Ravuna says. Honey, we saw the mission of Metaltam, Elab Arba, Muloy Amran, Elish, in the Pulks, Mishloy Sharba. But this is only said if from the bottom of the boat, within three Tvachim from the bottom of the boat, and within three Tvachim high, it doesn't have a width of four. If it does not have a width of four, within three tvachim of the bottom of the boat, that's when we say this then, it's not considered a mechitza, and it's not considered mechitza tluya, and you cannot carry aval. Yesh bapoks megimel arba'a, but if within three from the bottom of the boat, it does widen out to four tvachim, less than ba. If it, it's very, if it's very narrow, and it comes to, and it's, and it narrows, and within three from the bottom, it still hasn't, expanded and it still has, does not envelop an area of four by four, it's not considered a mechitza. However, 
if it flares out and it comes to a point on the bottom, but it flares out and widens quite quickly so that within three from the bottom, it does enclose an area of four, then it's not considered a suspended mechitz, it's not considered mechitz of tluya because we say apply the principle of lovud, and therefore we say that the bottom of the boat is now elevated and it comes up to the point of where the mechitza is, where it widens out, the bottom reaches that point, so it can, the mechitzas are considered touching the bottom and reaching the bottom. So it's not considered suspended. And another aspect is that if Imalino Kanim Orban in a less land bo and additionally, if the bottom of the boat was filled, if it was filled with reeds or different types of branches, and now therefore it the bottom, so where it now is filled up and there was a solid base, so where the it is wider for, it's touching the bottom, it's touching those conive urbane, so it's not suspended. The bottom of the boat is now considered to be where it's filled up, and it's filled up on the, the narrow part is filled up, and then the bottom is considered where it's widened. So these walls are now touching the bottom, so they're not suspended. It's not a machitza tluya. So then it also would be permitted, but otherwise it is not. Where you're saying, without these provisions, you're saying it's considered a mechitza tlui, it's suspended, and it's not a mechitza, and therefore you cannot carry uh, more than dalit within that boat. I will lay gudachis mechitza also. Why don't we say gudachis and say, well, yes, it's suspended, but look at the mechitzas as now it considered extended down to the bottom. If you have a mechitza tluya, if there is a space, why don't we view, say, Gunachis, and we view it as it's being extended all the way down. So then it does reach the bottom. Miloitana, didn't we learn Rabbi Yitzhak Nods Kana, if a person stuck in a Kana uh, a reed, Versus Arabim, Uberoisha, Traskal has a basket on the top. <clears throat> now there's a basket on this this pole or this post, and he, there's a basket on top of it. So the basket has a width, but the kana does not. Chayev. Now we say he's chayev. Why? Because we consider the basket to be Rishusa Yachid. How can the basket be Rishusa Yachid? Must be Alma Min Gurachas Mechitz also. If you have the, it's on a, on a post and you have the basket on top, then the walls of the basket are considered the basket. The walls of the basket are the walls of the Rishul Sayyachit. If the basket has a height of 10 and it encloses an area of Dalid, so there's walls enclosing an area of Dalid, but it doesn't reach down to the bottom. It's just being suspended on the Kana. Why would I consider this to be a Rishul Sayyachit? Why would I say if a person throws something from the Rishul Sayyachit and it lands in the basket that he threw, is considered throwing from a Rishul Sayyachit to Rishul Sayyachit? Why would this basket be considered a Rishul Sayyachit? Because it has walls which are 10, it encloses an area which is Dalit al Dalit, but I suspended in midair. So it must be because we view the sides of the basket as extending all the way down to the ground. We say gudachis. Similarly, over here by the boat, we should also say the same thing. What do you mean? No, but you're bringing me a raya from Urviyasi Barbi Yehuda, but the Chachamim argue. And they say it's not considered a Rishul Yachin. And they patter. They said if they throw from the Rishul Saram to it, it's patter. So you see that apparently they don't hold of good Achaz Mechitza in this case. What do you mean? And Baya says, do you not agree? You must agree now that we do say good Achaz. If it's an Omad, not a Kana. It's an Omad, and the post, the base of rather of it, is not four wide. On top of it is, on top of it is four wide. It's ten high, the top of it is four, uh, is four wide. But the base of it is not. 
but in the narrow part, the base, which is not four, but is three, and if a person threw from the Rishos Ramen and landed on his chayv. Now, there's no argument in this case. The Chum don't argue in this case. Alma mean good achas mechitz also. You see that you do say good achas. And hachanami good achas mechitz also. And we must say, therefore, say by the Beit also the mission, also say good achas. So, therefore, mida iri hasam havali mechitz shegedim baikim bai. Hach havali mechitz shegedim baikim bai. And therefore, you should be allowed to carry in the small boats, but it's also the mission, because even though it's tluya, suspended, but we should say that good achs mechitza. Omele ravach abrei the ravach la ravashi, gabe svina nami aike begitia bekiyaz dogim. Well, even if we don't have goats traveling under the open spaces, but there's fish that are swimming back and forth, why should they also not nullify the mechitza? Omele bekiyaz dogim loishme bekiyaz. No, that the fish. That's not significant enough. It's, for the most part, submerged underwater. That's not significant to negate the mechitzas, to therefore say that there's no privacy over here. It's not an enclosed area. No, we won't say it by the fish. In the dry land, we would say it by goats, but not by a dogim. Um, and tamer, what's my raya that there's a chilik between gadim and dogim? And the boy may Rabbi Tavlami Rabin, he asked the Mechitza Tluya Maushatati Bechurba. Let's say you have a suspended wall in a Churba, in a ruin. In a ruin, so you have walls that are partially broken. Let's say you have a wall, but it doesn't come down to the ground and it's suspended. Will that be considered a Mechitza? Can you carry within that Churba? Vamrele, ein Mechitza Tluya Materes, Ella, Bemai. It says, we only allow it, we only smatter on the war by water. That's a special kula over a bottle of water that we say that it's matter, a suspended mechitza is matter, but not over land. And therefore, by the churba, it won't be matter. Why should we permit it by the water? There's the fish. You see a right that bekiyas Dogim is not significant, and therefore, over water, a machitza tui will be matter, and therefore, he said, by the Beisos of the Mishnah, the small boats, you could carry with it, because even if it's considered a machitza tui, a machitza tui is matter b'mayim.